Strategy Not Two. And today we're just talking about different ways that we can collaborate together. It's a bit of an off the cuff stream, seeing what we can um, think about doing in the future. What do you have? It sounded like you had an idea, Melissa. What were you, what was on your mind? Yeah, thanks so much for having me. Um, yeah, I was thinking we could just share maybe like our favorite R Studio uh, productivity hack, something that makes your life a little bit easier when you're doing some R programming. Yeah, I love it. I um I always try and stress the importance of quality of life stuff when we spend so much time in that IDE. Um, there's a lot more to what we do than just code, 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 code. You wanna, um, you wanna get us started? Yeah, for sure. All right, so I wanted to talk about one of my favorite R Studio add-ins, and uh, that is the I don't know if it's Styler or Style R, mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that add in. So uh, I'm going to show an example of that first. So yes, I'm going to load the Tidyverse. And then uh, let's use the Diamonds data set as an example here. So just take a quick look at what that looks like. Uh, I'm just going to look at the, the variable names. All right. So um, what the what the style R styler add-in is going to do is it's going to uh, make sure that your script is conforming to the tidyverse style guide. Um, and you know, a lot of the times I find with with myself, I think that I know the tidyverse style guide really well, and then I use this add-in and I realize I do not have it memorized very well. Mm -hmm. So it's very very helpful for me to uh, just on the go make sure that my code looks aesthetically pleasing. So let's say for example. Uh, I'm going to not follow the, the Tidyverse style guide here. <laughs> and uh, let's say I wanted to create three new variables using the mutate function. So I'm going to create a variable called x underscore 10. And that's going to take the value of the x variable multiplied by 10 for some reason. And that I'm interested in that. And let's say I also want to create a variable called y underscore 10. And that's going to be the y variable multiplied by 10. And what I have right here does not follow the tidyverse style guide. Uh, but if I want to save myself from manually trying to make it conform, I can just use the add-in right here. So I've highlighted the code that I want to apply the tidyverse style guide to. And then under add-ins, I'm going to go to style selection. And it's going to automatically update that for me. And uh, I guess the other part to mention as well is that uh, in order for this add-in to show up, you do need to make sure that you have the Styler package installed first. Yeah, I love that. I think that, um, you know, when I'm teaching people that are learning R for the very first time, the style is all over the map. And it's something that I always try and just get them a little bit to try and get their code a little bit more legible for for themselves and their future selves when you go back to see code that is unstyled later on it's it's just so much harder to sort through 100 percent, and it makes it so much easier to work with other people as well so um since it since it came up let me uh let me pin you down styler or style r what do you normally I... say when you're not on a stream I don't know. I think if I'm not on on a stream, I would probably just say Styler. But a lot of the times, I do say package names with the R yeah. at the end. I think it's just because Styler actually sounds like it could be a word, yeah. whereas a lot of them don't sound yeah. like they could be a word unless they have the the R on there as like a separate yeah. thing. I um I think that's a a good sort of line to draw. I say I tend to say tidier. Okay. And, yeah. And I say uh, uh, deplier as well. Yeah. Which that would make sense because like the the hex logo has a flyer. a flyer on it, so I think I think that one is uh, it's settled on that one. Yeah. Well, so much of so much of what I do and what we do is is reading, right? And it's sometimes less oral than in some other fields, and so pronunciation is a little bit less sometimes fixed. I think um, Styler is a good example. Um, so I am going to show a little something here. Once I can find my R Studio in my mm -hmm. uh, share screen, there we go. So um, I, I was going to talk just a tiny bit about getting my R Studio console set up. When you first install R Studio, it looks kind of like this. I'm pretty zoomed in as usual. You've got your um, your script window in the upper left, and then your console right below it. 
And then on the right, you have your environment history, et cetera, and then files, plots, et cetera. And for me, I don't end up using this stuff on the right very much. Um, occasionally, I need things in the viewer, for instance, or in the plot viewer. Um, occasionally, I look in my environment, but I never look in my history, really. So um, I change that right off the bat. And so um, what I'm going to do is go to View and Panes, and I'm going to put my console on the right. There we go. And then a lot of times what I end up doing is I'll be just code, code, code over here, and then I can see the output on the right. So library tidyverse, <laughs> go ahead and do something that I actually will code. There we go. And if it were actually useful or interesting output um, or more useful and more interesting output, I would actually have a little more space to read it and everything wouldn't be crowded in. Um, the other thing that um, I think is really common when you're first getting set up or once you've coded for a little while and are thinking a little bit more about those quality of life issues um, is the just the appearance that you have here. So I'm going to go this time to um, my global options under my tools. Here's where the zooming in all the way is going to uh, be a little bit awkward. Maybe I'll zoom back out <laughs> somewhat. If I, oh, I can't. And uh, under editor theme, you have many different options. And so um, there's a number of dark options here. Um, Cobalt's one that a couple of my friends use. I know the dark options are very uh, are very popular. I saw you were in a, um, a lighter option, Melissa. I am, yeah. Yeah, I prefer it. I find it, it keeps me awake a little bit more. Yeah, I have, I have that as well. I feel similarly about that. Um, it's definitely, definitely not as popular, I find, though. So the the setup that you had, I, I think that's really interesting. How uh, how did you decide on that setup specifically? I wish I could cite a source. I read it somewhere, um, and I really try and and uh, and point when I get a a good piece of knowledge. I try and point you know on my stream where I picked it up, and I just can't cite a source for that. I read it on somebody's blog or or something or other, and it just immediately made sense to me. Um, yeah. And so. When I have a, a class in my my R, when I have a new R programming class, I have them make that change immediately. Um, and I think they're generally kind of happy for that one. Yeah, yeah I think so too. Yeah. And the other thing that's nice is that um, you can kind of like minimize the other stuff in a way that makes sense because the minimizes kind of work like downwards instead yes. of side to side. Yeah. So yeah, if you have the the console right underneath the script, you're probably never using those minimize buttons, but with the way that you have it, you can easily minimize those other those other two panes. I'm a I'm a big believer in um in in sort of best personal practices and just paying attention to what is um what really is working for you. And uh and I don't think there's a right answer on any of this. I think for a lot of people, those dark themes are more readable or more soothing or something. Um, but if that's not the case for you, then then stick with what works for you. And I, I think when you combine that philosophy with sort of a, a learning mentality, it can be really powerful. Absolutely. Well, it's great chatting with you, Melissa. Let's let's do this again really soon. Yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> Thanks so much for having me today. Yeah. So again, Melissa Van Bussel with GG Not Two. I'm Andrew Gard with Equitable Equations. We'll make sure that there are links to both of our channels down below. Um, if you found Melissa through me, make sure you subscribe to hers and uh, and vice versa. I hope. Absolutely.